Hi, this is Scott Sischer, Associate Editor of Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology. I'm here with Scott Commons. He's Assistant Professor of Medicine and Pediatrics at the UVA Allergic Diseases Center. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Today we're going to be discussing Dr. Commons' article that's entitled Delayed Clinical and Ex Vivo Response to Mammalian Meat in Patients with IgE to Alpha-Gal. So it's a great article. Thanks for that. You know, the Alpha-Gal story is a real paradigm shift. Um, in, in all food allergy. Can you just give us a little bit of a rundown of, of the aspects of the alpha-gal story? Yeah, sure. One of the initial shifts, as you say, is something that's important to, to both of us, which is the idea that we can break tolerance. So these are often adults who have tolerated mammalian meat their entire lives, and they end up with a history of tick bites, and before you know it, they have IgE to this sugar and have delayed reactions to mammalian meat. So, so, so some of the characteristics um, that's different than usual food allergies, this delay. Absolutely. And, and anything else? Well, also the idea that it's induced by an ectoparasitic tick. Um, and so much of what we know about food allergy is protein-based. Right. And this is a paradigm shift in that as well because it's – it's due to a carbohydrate. Got it. So the, both the clinical features and some of the pathophysiology behind it is different than what we usually think of when we're thinking of food allergy. So what was the purpose of this study? Well, we felt like we needed to formally demonstrate that the IgE response to mammalian meat in patients with IgE to alpha-gal is both delayed and is clinically real. Um, before this, we have reported, based on patient accounts, the idea that the allergic reactions are delayed and can be anything from simple flushing and urticaria to full-blown anaphylaxis. And what we did in this study was to show in a clinical observation way that we have demonstrated the delay, the mediators um, that we were able to track during that allergic process, and also this idea that Sometimes it is as simple as itching or a few scattered urticaria, but there are other times when it's actually quite severe. And um, some of our subjects in this study required epinephrine as a part of um, their allergic response. Okay. So sort of putting it all together, what does the clinician and, and researcher additionally learn um, from the results of the study and, and also the prior work that you've done? Well, I think part of it is this idea that we can have food allergy that doesn't necessarily appear to happen right after food intake. And I think part of it is we need to believe the patients who think, yeah, I really am convinced that this is related to, uh, in this case, beef or pork or lamb, even though it, the reactions occur so distinct from the meal itself. Right, so it's not uh, idiopathic anaphylaxis necessarily. Exactly. There was a connection. Yeah. And, and, and the, for diagnostic purposes, um, you know, what should the clinician be doing or looking for? Well, we're, we're fortunate in this instance that we do have a commercially available IgE test that can be run through a centralized lab, and they can order IgE to alpha-gal. We typically order that with a total IgE because we have some interest in this idea of a ratio. Mm -hmm. but. As part of this uh, work, we've also begun to find that the IgE response to the sugar seems to go down or wane over time. I think it can be boosted again by additional tick bites, but it's certainly something that does not appear to be a forever um, diagnosis. So I think it's worthwhile for clinicians to follow their patients who present with this allergy because it may well be over time that it becomes a thing of the past. So part of your instructions besides don't eat the food and have an emergency plan and self-injectable epinephrine is stay out of the woods. Stay out of the woods and come back <laughs> so we can recheck right. the level. Well, I have to say, your your group, uh, your and your group's work has really taken us out of the woods, and we're seeing the forest for the trees and all of that when it comes to this uh, very unusual uh, and, and really informative uh, issue of alpha-gal and anaphylaxis. So thank you for that. I appreciate it.